All right, Alabama lawmakers pass a law to use COVID relief funds to build more prisons. Let that sink in. Republican Governor Kay Ivey believes the funds are necessary for the state's struggling prison infrastructure. Criminal justice advocates argue the funds were not meant to increase prisons in the state and could be used to improve the lives of residents. Alabama has some of the highest incarceration rates in the nation. Blacks make up only a quarter of the state's population, but over half of the prison population. One more again. Blacks make up only a quarter of the state's population, but over half of the prison population. Make it make sense, Tammy. Listen, Monique. Fill <laughs> my chest. Make it make sense. I got that one more time. Blacks make up a quarter of the population of the whole state, y'all. But half of the prison population. So when we talk about criminal justice reform, the reform is addressing that. The math ain't mathing, okay? It, 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 ain't, it ain't no criminal justice reform, Tam. You know, we need ain't to none. talk about the support, but obviously uh, COVID relief money was not, you know, intended to build more prisons as we are trying to push and advocate for non-private prisons and reducing the prison population. So using funds where a lot of Black-owned businesses didn't even get PPP loans or EIDL because they can't even figure out how to do the paperwork right. And when they did do it right or wrong, they then got caught up with some federal indictments, but that's a whole other story. That money is not <laughs> for building more prisons so that they can identify more people that look like a me to fill up those prisons. And, you know, part of the reason why I do what I do and I, you know, I refuse to code switch because, you know, I got that DOJ seal to lean on regardless, you know, is I need individuals that are incarcerated or formerly incarcerated to understand that they are deserving of the forgiveness of clemency and that clemency is different than wrongful convictions and, you know, prosecutorial misconduct. But all of that goes into play when we have states that are building prisons for a financial benefit. It's a problem on a wider scale, and I just don't want to talk too much. Like, shut me up if you need to, but it's too much. It's too much. I right, no, going. I mean, and it's, it's pay to play for sure, but I mean, Avis, they said they were doing things to make their residents more comfortable. Apparently, the residents they're talking about is the ones in prison. <laughs> What, what they're doing is they are using black bodies as a monetization method to get white people jobs in Alabama. Period. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's an employment system. It's income generation. It's a, it's, it's a tax. It's slave labor. You name it. Um, prisons are the business. Prisons are big. Prisons are big. Hold on, Tam. Pr no, it, what'd you say, Dr. Avis? No, that, that's my point exactly. Prisons are a big business. When mm -hmm. you look at a poor state like Anna, Alabama, what they are, and you, you have the statistics that you just laid out, 25% of the population is black, over 50% of those in prisons are black. Those black bodies are being policed by whom? I tell you that it's not being policed by over 50% black people. I right. can tell you that. No. So it, it is, they are being, it's being used, we are being used specifically as the means of production for an industry in Alabama that disproportionately keeps lower educated white people employed. That's what that's for. And that's what that COVID money has been used to do to keep uneducated white people with jobs in Alabama. Yeah, can't, can't disagree at all. 15 seconds, Dr. Dabinga, and then we're going to a break. Let's just also add the fact that these prisons are going to be built in these rural populations, which are going to be used to add to the census count so that these rural communities can get more money that are not going to go towards those prisoners. So it's a hustle all around. And if people really want to talk about this, that money should be taken back because it's being misappropriated. And I thought that was illegal to do. Just one moment.
them to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> Own the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Roland was amazing on that. Hey, hey, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. You dig?